So it says that a single slit of some width is illuminated by some light of uh, some wavelength, uh, find the intensity at some angle to the axis as a fraction of the intensity at the central maximum. Okay, um, so having read the question, I hope you have this mental image. It's uh, always good to, uh, I guess you don't always have to draw a diagram, but I find it useful for myself to draw the diagram to make sure that I understood all the given information correctly. So the question is describing a situation. It's a single slit diffraction. So I have a single slit of some size. I have some light that's incident and it's uh, diffracting our descent. And the question is stated in a bit of an uncommon way in that it's giving you some angle at which the you are measuring the intensity of light. If your screen is here, you are looking at uh, what's the intensity of light arriving at this position on the screen. And um, instead of describing it in terms of interference maximum, minimum, it's uh, actually asking you for the fraction of intensity. And uh, that kind of question of that form is rare because your textbook doesn't um, go over the intensity pattern for double solid interference. They do go over intensity pattern for single solid diffraction in the section 4.2. <laughs> That's why we have this question. And um, it's worth going over because the, um, the expression for the intensity pattern of uh, single slit diffraction uh, looks quite a bit complicated. It's, uh, um, so so, um, so with that, um, I need to bring up that chapter section so that I um, <laughs> one, um, um, so that I can make sure that I remember the formula correctly and two, I can uh, plug in the numbers correctly. So uh, let me open up the section here. So, so this is a section that uh, derives intensity in single slit diffraction. I've talked about before how uh, we take a slightly different approach from your textbook. Um, it, one thing that is nice is that no matter what approach you use, the final derived formula it still looks the, is still the same. So, so I'm just gonna uh, look up equation 4.4, make sure I know what numbers to plug in and do that. And one thing your textbook doesn't do is it doesn't tell you um, what the symbols mean, but it's uh, using the symbols in the same, that same way that we are using. So the, in this uh, equation here for phi, a means the aperture, the size of the slit. Um, theta means the angle at which the light is going. And um, the lambda is the wavelength, the two pi, that's just numerical constant. So your textbook uses the phaser diagrams to go through this derivation. And when they do, um, by the way, you might have skipped to, to equation 4.4, then you would just step back to make sure that you get this expression here, equation 4.2, um, <laughs> in terms of which equation 4.4 is stated. So let me just copy this down to make sure that I have this uh, available as I'm plugging in the numbers. Your textbook defines a quantity beta. Uh, it's uh, some kind of an angular quantity. I, I don't know if I would be... Um, yeah, it's a, it's a quantity which is given in units of angle, radians. Uh, pi A over lambda, I'm making sure I have all the numbers that I need to plug in, times sine theta. Okay, I have theta too. Okay, um, so that's a, a, a newly defined quantity that I need to know the definition of. And then 4.4, uh, so this is the expression that relates to the, and I'll just to make sure that it has it correctly. Uh, equation, uh, where I not, um, uh, here. Where I not is the intensity at the center of the pattern. So I not is the intensity at the central maximum. I'm just to making sure that the way your textbook formula defines I not is the same way to describe in the question. I mean, it normally should be, but helps to check. <laughs> So this is the equation 4.4. 4. 
that we need to answer this question. Intensity as a function of, so as you stated here, it's a function of beta and beta is a function of data. So it's really giving us in, intensity as a function of data uh, is I naught times sine of beta over beta squared. All right. So, so yeah, that, that's it. Uh, the question is asking for I over I naught. So um, th that actually makes our job a little bit easier. If you solve for I over I naught, then you get uh, sine beta over beta squared. And normally I'm, um, normally I'm, has, uh, I want to avoid the plugging in numbers. This would be one of those exceptions. And it kind of goes with why your textbook took trouble to define this quantity beta. So I think I'm just gonna uh, work out beta numerically and plug in that number into the sine beta over beta squared and get my answer that way. So let me do that. Uh, so I have pi times, uh, I also don't normally plug in numbers, um, but <laughs> this is one exception I'll make. And I'm just gonna make sure that I enter A and lambda in consistent units, then I can ensure that the units just cancel out. So I'm gonna plug them, both of them in microns. So A is gonna be microns, 2.1. And as I divide by lambda, I'll convert this to microns. So in microns, so that's a, 0.589 micro, uh, you know, uh, hopefully everyone here is familiar with that. Times, um, the way my calculator works, I need to enter the angle first, 14 degree. Um, and yeah, yeah, and here I'm not gonna use a small angle approximation. I think I can, but I'll just uh, not use a small angle approximation. So 14 degree trigonometry sine, yeah, I'm just checking the input here to make sure everything looks fine. So when I say um, equals, so that is my quantity for beta. So let me store that into my calculator. And I'm just gonna do this calculation here now. Sine of beta divided by beta squared. So this is already beta. So let me take sine of that divided by beta, memory recall, equals, and then I need to square it. Okay, so that's my answer. Um, hopefully that's all correct. <laughs> so it's a three point, uh, let me, actually I guess I can just plug in here. So let me plug in the numbers into the system and see if it says it's correct. I hope it says it's correct. <laughs> uh, and I can actually enter it this way, 3.04 E minus four. Uh, this is the kind of calculator E notation. All numerical uh, problems will accept this as being uh, one of the ways it accepts the correct answer. <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> um, Oh, I know what I did wrong. So this is a, uh, yeah, uh, okay, so let me do this. Um, so it has to do the fact that my calculator is in degree mode. Um, so beta, as I was saying, it's a quantity in, um, this uh, is in unit of uh, radians. Uh, and radian is a kind of a fake unit. Um, but <laughs> when I compute this uh, sine of beta, uh, I have to make sure that, um, so when I ca calculate my beta, according to this uh, formula, the answer I got, uh, it was the unit of radians. So when I calculate sine of beta, I have to be careful here, either to have my calculator in radian mode, so that uh, when my calculator understands input as being in radian, or I have to convert the radian to degrees. Let me change the calculator mode to radian mode. I think that uh, makes more sense. So memory recall, that's my beta in radians. <laughs> so <laughs> let me take a sign of that again. Okay, okay, that looks more reasonable. 
divided by uh, memory recall beta again. Okay, that's it. Okay, and then I square it. Okay, uh, that now seems more reasonable. Um, let's plug that in and make sure that that's correct. Um, so 0 0.0239. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think uh, the higher levels of physics engineer and engineering you go um, more, there's a bigger bias to just keep using radium and not um, um, switch back and forth with a degree. And um, this question giving you the angle at which things are going in degrees, um, I intentionally or not made uh, cause to this difficulty, which is one of the reasons I wanted to uh, demonstrate doing this question because <laughs> I frankly forgot that this is a potential problem until the system said that my answer was wrong. Uh, 